Welcome. Why am I pointing my hand like that? Sorry, I, I don't mean to introduce y'all like that. Welcome everybody back to Killer Frequency. This is gonna be the ending to this game. The serial killer has been going on for way too long and today's the day we stop him. All right, well, we're back over here. Peggy, how you doing? I suppose I should take this call. All right, before we take this call, yo, Peggy, how you doing? Hold on, hold on. Let me talk to Peggy real quick. How you doing, baby you girl? What's good, mama? Up? All right, uh, let's go ahead and take the call. All right. Wait, oh, wrong button. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yep. Moving along. Pawnee's Pizza. I'd like to welcome Basura. another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Ah, uh, I bet I know why you're calling. Look, I didn't get the track. But I uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Okay. Wait. This is weird because this girl, the caller, Dawn, told me to go get a tape. But when I went down to go get the tape, the serial killer baited us down there and he was waiting for us. So what if this is the serial killer right here? Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. How so? Do you mean... Yes. He's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Okay. Helping? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Wait. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building. Okay. But this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Use a key? Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. Wait, an entry code? I need that code to get inside. I Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. What? Hold on. A neighbor's dog? Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he could muscle that thing in. Oh. Why? And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This guy can't get any. I'm gonna die. Okay. Um. Neighbor's name? What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. Okay, uh, security system name? What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security that 4000. That's, that's very familiar. And it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Okay, um, Starling, huh? Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. Okay. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Okay. So, I think I know all where right, that folks. puzzle is. That piece Here's of paper is. Here's a for you all to enjoy. While I try to break Don into her apartment. Right. Uh, play. No, we're not choosing You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. I agree. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Okay. Clive bought one for the station. I saw it somewhere Maybe down there. Maybe can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone... Okay, I definitely saw something down there now, however. Uh, okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starlink 4000. Okay. 
You know what? Before we go down there, is there any way we can just continue on with this dialogue? Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of key codes. I see. Okay, wait. Um... Okay, you know what? We gotta go down there and look. Okay, so we gotta go get the paper. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, cause I was gonna say I have that paper. Any ideas, Peggy? Dawn says she's stuck outside the Woodside Apartments with the whistling man nearby. She's locked out because of some new security system. Right. Yeah, the Starling 4000. Right. And we had the same security system delivered here. Okay. Clive was going to install it, so check the basement. I okay. guess that's where Clive would have stuff like that. Thanks, Peggy. No okay. Problem. Don't take too long. Shut up, Peggy. Damn. Taking too much out of my time. All right? Talking, talking, yipping, yapping. Okay. So, the reason I don't want to go down into the basement is because I actually have that piece of paper. I have that piece of paper somewhere saved. I have a picture of it because we they went down to the basement and I took uh, a lot of notes. Took a lot of notes, you know? Alright. Okay. So, if I'm not mistaken, the piece of paper is supposed to be here. Back here. What was that noise? What is that noise? Is someone else down here? Starling 4000. Got it, right here. User manual. Ah, these codes should got come it. in handy. All right, got it, got it. So I knew I left it somewhere over there. Um, now we gotta make our way back. And hopefully the whistling man isn't here to clap back. All right, and uh... The creepy music is really, uh, you know, uh, making me pull my pants. Hello, K fan. You are now watching the show. All right. Woo! Made it back. No jump scare. Oh, we late. Okay. I found it. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Yeah. Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let okay. you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. Sounds good. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.6. Dude, you don't gotta introduce yourself like that, bro. Come on. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Um... Okay, so, I gotta do some research here. She said she, uh, yeah, she screwed. All right, so I'm gonna narrow it down. It wouldn't make sense um, to do the maintenance call code, because it's like, the, that's for the maintenance, right? And it wouldn't make sense for the alarm test warning. This will set off all security measures. We don't want that to happen. Alarm test deactivation code might be it because then she can actually just deactivate it and go through, right? Because um, I've been reading about this manual and entry code is probably not for her either. So we're going to give her the alarm um, deactivation code, I hope. The code is 811220. Maybe. Thank you, Forrest. Why does he say thank you like that? Alarm has already deactivated. The alarm deactivation. <sighs> I think you gave me the wrong number on purpose. Well, just use the Wait, wait, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> Are you stupid bitch? Forrest, what did we do? I don't know, wait, I messed up. See, I, I knew. Oh, and they. No! Maxie! Goddamn! Roll the Ricky. Oh, Sir? Oh, Maxie! Oh. Ricky! Ricky! Hello? 
I don't know. I heard gunshots. Is that you? Did you have something to do with this? Ricky, whoever that was, she was trying to get into the building. I tried to help, but... She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. Now it's all... Oh, my God. That actually worked out because... That is the... Oh, my God. I just realized. Roll the Ricky. Man. You are giving me just enough time to get my rifle. Wait. Oh, man. Wait, rifle? Hold on, hold on. Maxie, I'm coming, buddy. Oh, God. Forrest, I've got to go. I've got to go. Come on, Maxie. Stay strong. Oh, okay. my God. Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. So the whistling man is a woman. I knew it. I I had my suspicions. I had my suspicions. Guys, I yeah, called sure, it. Forrest. It's you just I never did that. It. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Why? Well, I, I I knew that. I knew, I, I, yeah, she seemed pretty normal. I knew she wasn't right. I thought she was just a regular gal. I knew she, I wasn't, knew right. she wasn't right. I knew it, Is bro. that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she Shut requested that? Shut Peggy, I'm about to smack you. Hold on, to get me outside to mess with us? Maybe she actually wanted it. To get, to get me, me outside? outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. Yeah. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Oh my god. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. Yup. Yeah, that's how you the should The killer move. was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, right. our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16. Dude, shut so your ass up. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out... Well, I'm calling. Okay. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help. You know? Colby, uh, you're a good father. You're a good father, Murphy. Absolutely. Fernando's a lucky kid. Shut up, Peggy. Nobody oh, cares about your opinion. Thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Yeah, right, like, uh, what? You called in with information. I don't know, really. Right. Are you serious? Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. The man I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Damn. Man, I... How could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? Nothing. No worries. A waste of time. Oh, God. This is a waste of time. Well, this was a waste of time. Oh, hey, man, I didn't know it was going to be a Gallows Creek pop quiz. Well, I thought you had information. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators. Forrest, we have what? a call coming in. Yeah, uh, Sorry, Murphy. Murphy I yeah, think bye. That's all we've got Screw you and right your son, Fernando. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. 
but perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. Oh, wait, sorry. This is I Forrest Nash, and you're listening. <laughs> Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. Okay. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. What's your best friend's I don't name? know what to do. Please help me. Uh, is he still breathing? Is he still breathing? Yeah, but, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a okay. breath. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, It's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but. Who's your friend? Please! He needs to get to the hospital. Okay, who's your friend? I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Who's our friend? Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What is your friend's name? What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... well, you know. I know, but please... We need something, or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, we really need someone with a first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Okay, okay. Think you can handle that? Yep, 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 uh... Hit me. I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Okay. Lay him down. Lay Apply him down. continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. Okay. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Stop the bleeding. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Yep. Got it. I gotta do that. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? Yep. If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. What? Keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. Oh, God. If he oh does, God. act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Okay. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Okay, okay. Try to keep him warm. Warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm Vital and blood. calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. It's okay. That's as much as I can give you right now. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got to it. Stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. I'm Good on luck. It. All right, Forrest. K 
Casey's still on line one. Hello? Yep. Hello? Uh, Forrest, are you there? Yep. We're on our own. How is Jason? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly! He's still bleeding! I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. Okay. I don't know what to do. Here's That's what good, go. Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the, the knife in his leg? Keep it there. It's gotta be hell! No, Should I pull no. it out? No, don't touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you yep. sure? I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. Yep. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team Shut here. Shut up, Peggy! We're all going to get Jason through this. This Casey, bitch is pissing is me off. Sorry, I didn't right mean now. to say that. I hate looking at that knife. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. There's a lot to take in. We, we need to secure the knife. Leave the knife alone. We need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer, some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? I guess I've got my jacket. Perfect. All right. Uh, use the cleaning rags. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. Yep. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Bro. Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on Yo, this and bitch. And let us know when the bleeding is under control. Peggy. You're doing I'm great. I'm about to turn around, Peggy. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything. What was that And noise? we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. So what do you want me to do? She said there was a car there. I know she doesn't know how to drive, but we may not have a choice. Forrest, that's a terrible idea. Never mind hurting Jason. She might get herself or someone else killed. <sighs> Don't suppose you have any ideas then? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I... never mind. <laughs> So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Oh, Got great. It. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm what? not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway. Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> I just have to look around. 
Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> Let's get this key. Let's get this key. All right. Reggie's office. So, eh, I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't even know where that is. But we just gonna go ahead and go down here. And the dabity dabity do. And the whistling man is coming for you. Not me. You. All right. Reggie's office. So, if I'm not mistaken, this is the basement. That's outside. This has got to be it, right? Yep. That's the only room. We had the keys to that other one? No, we don't have the keys there. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, I found this. Looks like I need a four-digit code. Okay. Hence, very important date. Okay. All right. Very important date. Uh. Ooh, what is this? Nothing. Okay. Put that. Put that back over there. All right. Sorry, Reggie. Okay. Hold on. What does this say? Uh, ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Huh. What tapes? What tapes? Ooh, I got a tape right here. Hold on. I've seen one of these things before. Hey. What is this? Deep Cuts. Top Secret. Could this be it? Hold on. Pizza delivery killer who kills with a pizza cutter. Four digit code. Maybe it's 1107. 1107. There's a date right there. 1107. Takes place on 1107. Very important date for the town. Great goose gathering. Well, it can't be that easy, can it? We just got here. Uh, 1107. Nice. Wait, what? What is this? The tapes. Wait, what? Oh my god. Hold on. Wait, where did I just throw that? Wait, I needed that. I accidentally threw it. Where did I throw it? Did I throw that? Okay, yeah, I did. Okay. It's right here. Oops. Let me grab both of them. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and place this one right here. Over there. Just like that. And then we'll go ahead and plug this one in. We'll do all the tapes, to be honest. Oh, wait. I forgot. Take this one out. There you go. That's uh, Basura now. Go ahead. Plug that in. Get All a right. Load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. What? What are you doing? We don't have time for this. We have a man literally dying on the line, and we're more interested in you. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. Right. For the. I can read the rest of this later. Right. Okay. Name: Forrest Nash. Wait, that's me. That's me. That's me. Sorry. Right. Uh, you know what? I, I, I. I wanted to just, I just, I was just curious about my tape. You know, I, I'm gonna leave you at the end of the day. So, you know what I mean? Uh, all right. Bradley, Mr. Bradley. Let's take a look at Bradley. What? Whoa! What was that? Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Um, I... I got the safe open now. I what? got the safe open. Hold on. But I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid. Right, right. We need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Okay. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Right. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. I was got really. It. I'll take another look at the files. I'll let you know when I find something or don't. And I was really just calling Na uh, Peggy for reassurance. Okay. Bradley Carter, dude, who knocked on that? I know y'all heard that. I know y'all heard whoever just knocked on that door outside. Okay, notes. When I hired Brad as a station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places and a diner. What's the point? To then I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown. Henderson. Okay, so maybe he lives on Henderson. Uh, Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful time a lot together. I didn't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their... I thought I heard something. One of their after work wait, uh, meeting sometime. I've always wanted uh, to learn more about food. Brad and Barbara ended up missing uh, most of our first aid training session. Okay, so Brad and Barbara are out. Okay, Brad and Barbara, get 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 them out of here. Yeah, Brad, you definitely don't want to call Brad or Barbara. So just go ahead, toss that out. Um, let's go ahead. So we're down to four more tapes. Who's this one? Peggy. Wait, this is Peggy. There's no point in searching that one. Okay, so we're down to really, uh, hypothetically speaking, only, uh, what's it called? Three tapes. Who is this one? John. Okay, John. 
John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was a station policy to send everybody regardless. So John is a suspect, or not a suspect, uh, a, a possible person we can call. So he's very um, up there. But can I just go outside? Oh, God. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Karen Lawson. Let's take a look at Karen Lawson. Alright, I hate how you can't see the door. Um, Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She is fully taking, taking on Hamish's show alongside the Timberlands lens ever since she left us. Uh, anything about first aid? Um, they've now both missed Secret Santa, first aid training, and the Teddy. Okay, so she missed it. Okay, so John is really the only one that we can not call. Hey. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? Uh, I think I know who to I call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Uh, Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's Casey? wrong? Casey. Oh, he's going in shock. I tried to give him a rest, but he just threw up. He's Everywhere. going in shock mode. Shock, 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 shock. What's shock. happening? What do I do? Uh, he's, yep, he's going in shock. Uh, Peggy, what did the nurse say? Did he have booze here? He's going God, in shock. God, it sounds like he's going in yep, shock. Yep, I already knew it. Casey, Hail. just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Wait, the bleeding seems Casey, to slow down? Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I, I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. About shock. Okay, um, elevate Jason's legs. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing yep. to his vital organs. Vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Come on, come okay. on. Okay, I propped his legs up on some boxes. Okay. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm as possible. Okay. 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 Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. Great, 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 I'll great. That's perfect. Perfect. Just give me a second. Perfecto. Mm. There you go, Baba. Sorry, sorry. Jason's plates there with bandages. Sh should I get a new one? Or oh god. Okay. Um apply an additional bandage. Don't remove the bandage. Apply another one on yep. top of it. If you remove it, you it's just gone. It's gonna leak again. Use. Yup. I'll use my jacket. Yup, that's I fine too. Get a new one. Yep. I'll fix the bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. There you go, Jason. Sorry, sorry. I'm done. You're gonna be okay, Jason. Just relax now, okay? Boy, he's scared. He's not doing well. You see? He's gonna be fine. Be strong for Casey, Jason. I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit with him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? Okay. But please, I, I can't give him what he needs. Please sit down. I can't lose him. Okay. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. Call John. You said you knew who to call earlier? Yes. Who was it? Call John Hedges, call Karen, Karen, call John. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, right. but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we yep. have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yep. Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. Yep. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's help me pick. Who the hell is this calling me? At? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and Please. we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn. No, 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 no. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly Woman. hurt, and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? I'm being serious. We're not kidding. A man is going to 
die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Nobody cares. Get your ass out. What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. Come on. One to the stomach and one to the Just leg. Start heading there. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank, Thank you, John. You, John. Thank we'll you. Let him know you're on your way. Good luck. All right. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started thrashing. How is he now? Are you hurt? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, yeah. help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Perfect. I'm guessing that's Jason there. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Thank you, John. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. Yep. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope he's gonna be all right. <sighs> and with Yo, that, somebody's in the this show room. moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Somebody's in this house, in this in this radio station. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Oh my God. Okay. Well, here we go. Here we go, guys. I'm dying. This is the part where I die. The whistling man, I want to apologize for all the tr trash I talked earlier. F I I want to say sorry, and I am not scared of you. And I actually want to be friends with you, actually. And whoever, is, whoever it is you're trying to kill... Your mama will. <laughs> Okay, actually we're safe. Introduce the song, no, we're good. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. All right, let's go back on air. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. All right. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, man. Hey, it's Roller Ricky. Okay. Good to hear from you What's again. What's up, Ricky? Uh, how are you holding up after everything? Is Maxie okay? Maxie is a little fighter, man. I just know he's going to pull through. I think our roller show might be canceled tomorrow, though. Uh, I'm sorry again about... How that went? Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. What's that? I'm waiting. All right. I'm waiting. You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right. And what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because... George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. All right, keep talking. Keep talking? What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. What? He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? What was her name? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. 
He just called her Bean. I, I didn't really know her before or, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. Why you? And... Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. Took a long time to learn, but... Yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. So could... Anyway, George I think it's time girl? for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Night, Ricky. Could George's all girl Alright, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's what? up, Peggy? 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 You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. I don't like this. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. I was about to say, who is Sarah? We haven't been able to get through until now. So help us on it's the way. been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that Wait, doesn't what? matter right now. How does Listen, she... we're coming in hot, but we need your help. Okay. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. What do you need? You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. I hope so. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Man. Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. 
Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking Don't up. Don't say anything. It's almost over. Why would but you say that? But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. Don't say John, this on live. Is, Don't is say this on live, y'all. He's a fighter. He'll be fine. De exposing. Got stabilized and resting in a bed. Exposing us. Preparing to move He's to exposing every move Thank of ours. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're screwed. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Hey, you feeling it okay? It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So... I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> right, right. Take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? Yeah. Yep. As far as we know, anyway. Well, I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. On air? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but... This call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. It's the first him. time she does that. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough. Peggy? To hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. George? And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like it never existed. Who killed George? Who killed George that night? <sighs> Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone, and started an almighty panic. Those screams... That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't... Uh, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Oh, my Let's God. I up a while ago in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? I'm dead. I'm dead. This is the part where I die. Bear point! It's in the storage 
storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. Oh my god. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. I'll see you when you're back. Oh my god. This is where I die. A few minutes later. Oh man. Whew. Hey. You're probably wondering why I look so different, right? It's actually currently the next day, okay? Um, I actually had to run around the house clean up before my parents came. I didn't want my parents come into my house looking like a mess. All right, so we gotta go turn the power on, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, this is the part where we die, unfortunately. I have a hard feeling that my man's is gonna be somewhere here. In this studio, the power is completely off. He could be hiding anywhere. And if he's hiding anywhere, he's probably going to kill me. Wait, how's the power off if these signs are still on? And so is that. Okay, well, down to the basement we go. All right. What's that noise? K-Fame Radio. We're turning on. The power again. Man, it really sucks not having. Huh. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? I'm dead. Oh god. That must be it. Wow. Boom! We've got power. Okay. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Oh, God. Peggy? No, 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 no. Screw it. Peggy can die, bro. We, you know, we gotta get out of here. I'm dead. I'm dead. What was that? Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. We gotta go. We gotta go. Peggy can die for all I care. Peggy can die. I, I gotta go. I, it's, me, it's, it's me or you, Peggy. And I'm picking me over me any day. I'm sorry. Peggy, you gotta die. Wow. What was that? Peggy? My cheeks are about to get clapped. Peggy? Oh, shorty done got caught up. What? Why is it locked? Oh, no. Peggy. Peggy! Where'd you go? This can't be happening. What? What do you point at? She. A, a call. Wait, you want me to do something? Oh, right here. What do you want? What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. I knew it, it was gone. You know, gone. I really enjoyed our chats tonight. I guess we've had some moments. My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. Ha! You sure did get me then, Forrest. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Bro, why? Got more time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. Ooh. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's 
all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world... Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. So this... And if he oh says my where God. that is, well, he knows I'll get it. Then who's here? Wait, then... Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. What? Your son? Your son? You mean you... Wait, that, that he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. Don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. What? Locking my stupid boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He that did. makes sense. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. What? Hang on. Did you say Barrel? Then are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. I wonder if Mooney went crazy wearing this. Why? This is such a trip! <sighs> what? Marie? Marie Campbell? What? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Not Don, huh? Where's this going? Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Okay. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. Okay. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay. Uh, I'll do it. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Perfect. Murdered? Uh, listen, I. The shorty's going on a whole Mayweather trip. I on said him. you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Okay. If you say so. If you say so. I want to know what Peggy I'm was doing back here. Not really in a position to argue. Coffee! I'm happy we have your cooperation. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> so this is I need son. to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek and... If I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Wait, did you Just, say that uh, while you're micing Ms. Yuda? Talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Um, do you want to die? Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't, start talking. <coughs> there you go. What the hell? God damn it. Okay, our first team party was coming up, and when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could right, crack the prank. new guys. Okay, uh, whistling night, right? I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight oh, as whistling night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. Right. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Keep going. Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but... George didn't come alone. Right. He brought 
Marie. And Roller Ricky. He was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. Okay. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Okay. Did you ask Ricky? And so he deserves to die? Did you ask Ricky? Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. Bingo. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given that everything away. That. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? Hit him, Marie. Hit him again, Marie. Oh. There you go. God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. They talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. When is the cops coming though? Shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. No, you're going to jail. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream. Starts laughing. Tell me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. Okay. What happened next? How did you feel? How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small and confused. Where's Peggy at? And Who was under the mask? Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing no away. Stop. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> George. Teddy. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. Where were you? Where were you when it happened? I, uh... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh, you bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Then why cover up? Even if you didn't push it. If she's lying, why the cover? I really believe her. My future was at stake, Ash. 
You know what it's like. People like us are bragged for bigger Well, now things. you're gonna die. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. Yo, we on it, huh? And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? It's evil. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. Hit him again. Hit him again, Marie. Damn it! <laughs> yes! Okay, we own most of the town. Damn, That's Teddy it, is evil. Your father was going to run her out and of we business. Can't, I can't. We, we helped him. She lied and said she found him. Reason all this happened because it's Teddy. Instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. Oh, that's what and money gets. Fake report? Uh, I only heard the tapes. You got money, man. You control a lot. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe... There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no. That coward killed the story. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. When will the killing end? When will the killing end, Marie? End? When does it end? You can't kill the world. This has to stop sometime. It has to. You never should have started. You shouldn't have pushed my door down the cliff. You should have been punished. To a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met. Oh, we that's where she is. Football team. It was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Oh my God, this is on me. Where is Marie holding Teddy hostage? Oh, the football field. Why would he? Th why would I, I don't know. Hold on. Oh my God. Why is Why is he getting closer? Um. You know what? I'm going with a school gym. Do I do it? Am I doing it? Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Okay, perfect. Roller rink didn't make sense. Yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. What is Peggy doing there? We'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy. Peggy. It's been so what long What does Peggy have to do with this? Your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god. I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Wait, what? Someone explain? Forrest seems lost for words. Yeah. Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And... When you walked in, you found out that my sister 
is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I What's up? Are you trying to kill me? something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned my name, George. And... And... Uh, Marie... I have a class so of coffee, sorry. buddy. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Next best thing? Next best thing? Do you mean someone has to pay for what they did? Mari, please. What's Peggy got Mom do? and dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. Oh my god. You forgot. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth Wait, shut. I approve. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? I have it right here. The card you made me for my eighth birthday. Happy birthday, Peg. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love M. I I... Anderson police! Freeze! No! Oh, he's done for Henry! too. Get out of there! Ah! Peggy! We have two wounded, and we're in pursuit of the suspect! Anderson police! Freeze! Forrest. I wanna see. Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now, oh. we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. Oh. It's over, Forrest. My God. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben. Forrest, Forrest Nash. Nash. Ah, uh, good night and good morning. Let's make tomorrow better. Let's make tomorrow better. Oh my god. Is that it? And it ends like that. Oh my god. Wait, what is this? It's not even ending yet. Oh, it is the end. Oh my god. Look at all these little puzzles throughout the game. Chinese pizza, that annoying ass dude. Oh wow, what is this? Officer Trout, come in. One suspect is in custody. Trail the other suspect into the nearby woods. Yeah. Well, I hope they catch him. I really hope they catch him. Oh wait, skipped it. Oh, skip it. All right, well we skipped it. Yo. I just want to say this one thing, because this is the end of this game. There's possibly going to be a part two. Who knows? This was one of the most immersive games that we have ever played. Um, and it was really short, but it was so sweet. It was perfect. It was like the perfect balance of everything. The perfect balance of action, horror, the anti-climax. Everything about it was mwah. It really had me thinking this whole entire time and the plot twists were even crazier like peggy was sisters with the whistling man and the whistling man there was two of them one of, that explained why there was a girl and there was a guy and we i, I was on to something cause i was like wait there's no way this has to be the girl the you know she could have whistle I, I i was really on to a lot of clues but it just mind boggled me at the end thank y'all so much for watching like, for real, this was one of the greatest games that we've ever played recently in this past year. I know we have the Wolf Among Us, we have the Finish 2. There's a bunch of other games.
I just want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey, and I'm excited. Hopefully, they may come out with a different game. Uh, these game developers, they're amazing. Uh, shout out to Team 17, I believe, and that's that. Killer Frequency. It's been your, your host, Fade, on the Fade channel. 198.15, the scream. Hey, I, I kind of killed that. Hey, I kind of killed that. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, listen, I love y'all. Take care of yourselves, all right? And I'll see y'all tomorrow. I love y'all. Take care and goodbye, everybody.